Hi everyone, this is Kylene with Parents for Public Schools of Pitt County. We are continuing our Spring 2021 School Tour Series here at Grifton School today. We are so excited to meet some of their staff and their teachers and their administration and learn all about the great things that are happening there. We're gonna start out with some introductions so that you'll know who's joining us today and then we'll have a chance to talk with them and see some of their great space. We will start with our administrators. If you all would like to tell us who you are and what you do there at Grifton School. Uh, hi, I am Kevin Smith. I'm principal of Grifton School. Hi, I'm Casey Mathis. I'm the assistant principal. All right, great to meet you all. Let's move over to Ms. Hahn. Hi, I'm Ms. Hahn. I am the media coordinator at Grifton School. Great to meet you. Thank and you. And how about Ms. Avery? Tell us what you do there. Hello, I'm Jamie Avery. I'm the instructional coach here at Grifton School. And uh, my job here at Grifton is just to facilitate instruction for teachers and students. All right, thanks for being with us. Uh, Mr. Scott, tell us what you do at Grifton. Hey, I'm Coach Scott. Uh, I am the health and PE teacher here, one of the two. And uh, I'm also the athletic director in charge of all the athletics here at Grifton School. Excellent. Mr. Hill, what's your role there at Grifton? Hey, my name is Coach Hill. I'm in charge of the CTE department. Uh, our new program is uh, Pax and Patterson College and Career Ready Labs. We have 13 modules and also help out with math. All right. Sounds like you keep busy. Um, and I think last on our call, but certainly not least, we have Mr. Pagona. Tell us what you're doing there at Grifton. Hi, I'm Scott Pagona. I teach band and orchestra here at Grifton, and today I'll also be speaking on behalf of fine art, chorus, and general music. Wonderful. It sounds like we have a great tour ahead for us. Um, let's start with our school administrators first and just learn a little bit about the school. Ms. Mathis and Mr. Smith, a common question that we get is about school size. So can you tell us about how many students are there at Grifton and about how many students a parent could expect would be in their child's classroom, of course, during a typical year? So we have over 400 students, you know, and that is pre-K through eighth grade. Um, our we typically have two to three classes in each grade level, and the average class size is about 20 students. All right, excellent. Um, and I wonder, maybe Ms. Mathis, you could help us learn a little bit about communication that comes from Grifton, both from a school-wide level and also how parents could expect that teachers might communicate with them. So on a school level, um, we have weekly phone calls that go out every week. And along with the phone call, we get a text message and an email. Um, and Mr. Smith does, does those. Um, they come out on Sunday nights at five. <laughs> I know it's always him calling on Sunday nights. And it just goes through the weekly updates, you know, in a typical year, any sports, any testing, anything that we have going on that week, the parents are aware. Um, typically on a K, probably five level, because we are K-8, you know, so it's a little bit different. On a K-5 level, level, we have class dojo that the parent um, teachers use to communicate with parents. Um, it's real quick and the teachers do a really good job with that. Typically on a middle school level, it's more emails and phone calls um, and the teachers try to do this at least once a week to try to touch base with parents. All right, and of course, parents, you know my spiel if you've watched any other videos. Uh, please make sure that you introduce yourself to your child's teachers at the very beginning of the year to establish that relationship right from the start. Um, I wonder if Mr. Smith and Ms. Mathis, um, one very common question we get is about the cafeteria. So I wonder if you could tell me in a typical school year, um, how long students get for lunch and uh, what time of day they eat lunch and if they get to eat with any friend or if they stay with their classes. We, uh, you know, our, uh, all of our classes go to lunch uh, together. You know, typically the whole, the entire grade level will be in there at the same time. Uh, it is a 25 minute lunch period. Uh, the line moves very quickly so you can get the most amount of time to eat. Um, you know, typically we, you know, you know, in a regular class, you know, teachers always, you know, try to accommodate students, allow them to sit with their friends as much as possible. Um, you know, middle school, a lot of times that's an incentive for great behavior, you know, is for students to be able to sit with their friends. So, you know, that's something they really like to work for. 
um, you know, our middle schoolers have a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more relaxed for them, you know, to get a little more freedom during lunch, you know, you know, as long as they kind of show, you know, that, you know, they've earned it, you know, while our K-5 may be more structured, you know, because those students do need a little bit more assistance and support. Um, you know, but the good thing is being such a small school, everyone knows everyone, you know, and uh, it's a great family environment. That's great to hear. Um, I wonder, I know during our tour, we're going to see some of your Encore spaces, but a typical question I get from parents is about Encore classes or specials classes. They're called different things at different schools. So can you tell us for the elementary side um, what they get to go to each week in terms of art, music, PE, um, and does that change when they move on to the middle school piece? Oh, so the only, so for K-5, um, they all kind of do a rotation through encores. They all go through a rotation of encores. Um, typically in a, in a regular year, <laughs> our middle school kids kind of get to pick what they would like to do. Um, and then they still kind of go through everything, but we do allow them a little bit more choice. Um, so right now what we've done this year is they're kind of on a six week rotation. Um, so that, you know, if, if they have art the six weeks and the next six weeks, they go through music on a K-5 level. Um, so that way they get all, you know, they get to experience everything. Um, we do have Coach Hill who does the CTE lab, and, but he only does that for fifth through eighth grade. Um, and that is a big hot commodity. The students love that, um, the labs and stuff like that. So in, because he only has a certain amount of space, um, kids do kind of get placed in there. Um, and so, but we kind of make sure that they all get the opportunity at some point to go through that lab because it is really, it's good for them. Wonderful. It sounds like there's a lot of exciting opportunities and lots of choices, and um, they will certainly have experienced many different things by the time they go through kindergarten through the eighth grade. Um, my last question before we go see some of your school, uh, lots of parents are always asking how they can get involved. So could you all tell us a little bit about parent engagement at Grifton, certainly in a typical school year? Yeah, in, a, in a typical school year, we do have an active parent teacher association, uh, you know, that, that facilitates ways for uh, parents to be able to volunteer. Uh, also, you know, our, you know, you know, our staff is also very good at bringing in parents to be able to get involved. For example, Ms. Hahn uh, will have, have events in the media center where parents can come out and read or, you know, they can help with a book fair, things of that sort. Uh, we, you know, in a typical year, we do encourage volunteers, you know, we'll have events where parents can come out and help. And we also do, you know, events after school that are fun events where families can come out together. You know, like, for example, we typically do a fall festival with our PTA, uh, you know, where families just come out and have a good time too. And they get to interact with our staff informally and build those relationships. You know, here at Grifton, you know, you know, Grifton is the family town and, you know, the school definitely tries to promote that as well, you know, that close bond, you know, between home and school. All right. It sounds like there's a lot of opportunities for parents to connect and that small school feeling really can provide a great opportunity for families uh, to connect with teachers and students and the community as a whole. Um, we are going to move on now and start seeing some spaces and meeting some staff there at Grifton. I do want to remind folks that we are filming during the pandemic, even though you might be watching this years down the road. Um, if you see someone in the video who is not wearing a mask, please know that they are in a room alone. Um, and if they happen to have someone enter their room, then you'll see them put on a mask. But our schools are doing a great job um, really keeping safety at the forefront. So just want folks to know why you might see some mask on, mask off going on throughout the video. It's always in a safe manner. We are going to start with Miss Avery, who's the instructional coach there at Grifton. And I wonder if you could tell us some about the academics and uh, just academic instruction at your school. Um, so some things that we've been doing here at Grifton School, we've been doing you know, professional development, which looks a lot different this school year, obviously, but we've been pushing that out in order to meet the needs of our teachers and ultimately to meet the needs of our students, especially during this 
crazy pandemic that we are living through. One thing that I wanted to highlight are our multi-classroom leaders. We currently have three of those in our school um, on a daily basis. We have one that works with K2 and she's really focusing on reading and reading comprehension and things like that and bridging that gap that, you know, happens over the summer, but especially since, you know, we got out very quickly last March. Um, we have one that's working with our third and our fourth grade teachers and we have another MCL that's working with our fifth and sixth grade math teachers. Um, and they're just really working closely to ensure our students are receiving differentiated instruction to meet their academic needs. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight that we've done a really good job with is a lot of our teachers, especially 5-8, are singletons, which means that they've only, they're the only one in our building that's teaching sixth grade ELA. And so we've noticed that you know they were doing a fabulous job but we wanted to make sure that we gave them some collaboration time so we got together with some other k-8 schools in our district and we've allowed them some plc time which just helps them kind of talk through the standards dig deep unpack them and plan engaging fun learning focused lesson plans in order to really just get the biggest bang for our bucks and those those have been going wonderfully Thank you, Ms. Avery. It definitely sounds like students there have um, very well equipped teachers and like a lot of creativity is being put into the academic and learning process uh, and students are going to get a lot of support from those teachers. I think we are going to move now to the media center, which is always a favorite spot to see in a school. We have Ms. Han there in the media center to tell right. us what happens there. All right, so I am Miss Han, and I'm going to kind of flip my camera around so you can see. Um, we have an amazing space. Um, being a K-8 school, we have a very large collection of books, and we have books on this side. You'll see this is our early chapter books, early fi reading fiction, um, storybook fiction for our K-4 we have nonfiction and a chapter book section over here, and we have our teacher sets. We have an amazing collection at Grifton, and our students are really big as nonfiction readers, which is great. So our collection is larger than some other schools based on our students' preferences. One of our goals at Grifton School and when we select books is we go by looking for windows and mirrors. And what that means is we're looking for books when our students open them up that take them other places that help them see different views than they see just, you know, sitting here at Grifton. We also want them to open up books and see themselves. So that's the mirror. So that's our focus and goal is to try to have books that are mirrors for the students and windows. We have um, hard, hardback books that the students can check out, but we also, for our virtual learners this year, we have um, Sora and we have thousands of um, eBooks. Grifton School has so many Sora readers. We actually received and um, won $500 worth of extra eBooks through Sora because of our readers participation. We have, like Mr. Smith said, in a normal year, we have two book fairs. We have a Christmas book fair and we have a spring book fair, which um, connects with our festival we have in town, our Shad Festival. And we have fishy tales where the students participate in writing and then they come and they share their story. So it's an oral tradition of oral storytelling, which is great. Um, we have received um, grants through Pitt County Schools um, for traveling through books. One of the things we wanted to do is to give our students an opportunity to go different places um, by opening different books. So we uh, did traveling through books and we received our grant and we have books that help the students travel the world, all different locations. And we also run a constant list of student requests because we want our students to come in and be invested and engaged in our media center. So when they come in and they say, hey, Ms. Han, 
I heard about this great series or Miss Han, we only have the first book. Do we have the rest of the series? We put it down and we try to, anytime we have an order and we have funds or a grant, those are the books we go to first. So we also, um, being a K-8 school, we have two Battle of the Books teams. So we have an elementary team and a middle school team. It's been a little tough this year, but um, so we are really doing it as a book club this year. We're still reading, um, but we are taking some of the pressure off and just um, reading for enjoyment and not just the competition. And we have an open checkout in our media center. What, what that means is students are welcome anytime to come in and pick out books. They can come with a whole class or they can come and check out by themselves. So um, we have a great collection. We have a great support system for our media and technology department. So we encourage everybody to come in and check out our space. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Han. It was great to hear about all of the many opportunities for students there in the Media Center um, and even the connections that you make to the community um, you know, during the spring, connecting it to the Shad Festival. And it, it was great to hear about, um, again, just the way that the school feels like family and community, even there in the Media Center. Thank you. I think we are moving on now to talk with Mr. Scott uh, in the gym. And he is the athletic director. So he's going to tell us about some opportunities in that department. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, first off, again, Coach Scott. And first, I want to just show you around our facility and let you see. This is what you will see when you come into our gym. Nice, spacious area that all our students, all over 400 on a normal year, get to see within a week. Uh, normally, on a normal school year you know just like because nothing's normal this year we uh we were able to do k-5 they're able to have pe two times a week for 45 minutes so they're able to come in here and get their you know all their energy out and all that enthusiasm learn the fundamentals of different things and then we also in our afternoons we have middle school so it's a unique thing where we get all of them all the way from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade uh, with middle school, they have health and physical education. So what we do is we do PE and we alternate weeks with health. So we focus on general health, uh, physical, mental, emotional, everything, and make sure that they're active, getting up and moving around so that they get all, not just the physical activity, but also the brain stimulation that they need throughout the day. Uh, now with athletics, we have sports that are open for sixth through eighth graders, just like the whole county. We are very unique since we're a small middle school population. We have sixth graders that come to the school, have an opportunity right away to play sports. They have an opportunity to get on the courts, get on the fields and actually contribute. That doesn't happen a lot because a lot of middle schools around here have six, 700 kids. Well, that's not our case, which we love. We love our kids being athletes, the, and being able to play multiple sports, not just one. And that is a very unique asset that we have here at Griffin. Uh, with that, we offer in the fall, we offer volleyball and cheerleading for football through Grifton. And since our population is so small, we offer cross country and football that go to Aiden. Well, we give them a ride over there on the bus and make sure that they have transportation to two practices and to their meets and football games. And therefore, if they want to try it and they, we don't have it here, we do make sure that they have that opportunity. We don't leave them out. Uh, then when we go to winter, we have girls and boys basketball and we have a cheerleading. If anybody wants to join after that, that did cross country or then they can do that or volleyball. And then in spring, which is about to come up, we're hopefully going to get to try to play a spring sport this year. Since it's outside, we have baseball, softball, and again, we are able to join with Aiden to do soccer if we need to. Uh, we had a couple kids that did it last year. Again, shortened season, but we did get the, we did have a few that got to try it out. And we enjoy it. Uh, I, this is my 10th year here, so I've enjoyed it here. I've seen the kids grow up. Uh, I think 
I've seen my first group come all the way from kindergarten all the way through to eighth grade, and now they're in high school. So I, I enjoy seeing the progression that you get, and that doesn't happen at very many schools. Thank you, Coach Scott. That was a great overview of not only your space and not only your programs, but really uh, the passion that goes into those programs and how much you as a staff member uh, enjoy connecting with the students through those programs. Um, we are going to move now to learn about the arts programs, the band and orchestra, and we're going to talk with Mr. Pagona. Uh, thank you. And since I'm speaking on behalf of Ms. Wells, uh, um, Mr. Wells, the art teacher, and Ms. Williams, the chorus teacher, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to do a share screen. And whoops, I've been disabled. I thought I had the ability to do this. I have a, a slide presentation. So if you could give me some uh, uh, share capabilities. Got it. Okay. All right, and let me just get this. Um, here we are. The cultural arts here at Grifton is really um, a hit for such a small school at the southern end of the county. We're really a hidden gem as far as cultural arts are concerned. Um, Mr. Wells, the art teacher, Ms. Williams, and myself all have more than a few years of experience under our belt. Um, this is uh, Mr. Wells, um, our art teacher. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase and do some reading. Mr. Wells teaches and shares the joy of art with his students. Students are able to share their creative efforts with the community through art shows at the College Festival, Shad Festival, the Merge Art Gallery, and at the Greenville Mall. Student art is also shared virtually on the school Facebook page. Mr. Wells does an excellent job of getting his students' artwork out into the community. Um, student art can be seen year-round in our school and in our town, whether it be on the mural or the gym. The children's flag hoisted along McRae Street or posted on the walls of our school. Art is an important part of the Griffin School experience. And of course, you can see some of the student art again. Um, each year, students compete to design the cover of our yearbook. Here are a few examples of past winners. Um, students also um, compete each year. I'm sorry, I'm having an issue here getting this thing out of the way. Students also compete each year in a holiday greeting card contest. Student art is represented on both the front and the back of the card. Cards are mailed out to schools, businesses, and others in the community. Um, we also participate in the Pitt County um, school-wide um, uh, holiday card contest, and we've had uh, two winners in the past several, in recent years. This is Miss Williams. She is our wonderful chorus and general music teacher. Um, in these photos, you can see her posing with um, a student that um, he was selected through audition to participate at the North Carolina Middle School Honors Chorus that performed at the National Association for Music Educators Convention in Greenboro. And he got a special award for that. Um, each year, Ms. Williams prepares students to participate in the All County Honors Chorus held at ECU. And there's some students from recent years that have been. Um, Grifton Chorus takes music out into the community as well. Here they are performing for the folks at River Oak Assisted Living and also at the Veterans Day celebration here at Griffin. And here are some photos of uh, Ms. Williams' um, chorus room and general music room. Um, this year, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, um, we're all having to take our arts to the classrooms, but she's ready to go when this pandemic is over. And there's little old me, and there's some photographs of the band and orchestra room. One thing we are really, really fortunate to have here is a wonderful rehearsal space for band and orchestra. Um, and we have easy access to the stage. Um, it's been recently carpeted and it's looking really sharp. Um, it makes it a special place for the kids to come. I also wanna point out on, on this slide that um, in fourth and fifth grade, students have the option to take orchestra as their encore for that for the year. So they'll still, they have two encores a day they can choose uh, orchestra as one of those in fourth and fifth. And then of course, that can continue in the middle school and uh, in sixth grade band, it also is, uh, becomes an option for them as well. Um, here are some photographs of our stage um, during some of our band and orchestra concerts here at the school. Um, we are very fortunate to have an auditorium here at Grifton. Most middle school students don't have an opportunity to play on the stage. Um, most middle schools have to present their programs in a gymnasium, but we have a big, large stage 
and an auditorium. So that's a, a huge feather in our cap here at Griffin. Um, in 2019, Griffin Middle School Band and Orchestras participated at the North Carolina Music Performance Adjudication, um, also called MPA. Um, in former years, they used to call that festival or contest. Um, 2019, the band received a rating of excellent, which is hard to get, but the orchestra was awarded a rating of superior. That's top marks. Um, unfortunately, last year that was canceled due to COVID-19, but we are looking to get back in the swing of things as soon as, once again, like everybody, once this is all over. Um, each year, Grifton, we send um, our some of our top students to uh, participate in the All-County Band and Orchestra, and there's a photograph of um, middle school All-County uh, All Orchestra. Um, every year, band students from all over the state have the opportunity to audition for all district band. In 2019, Grifton was represented by three students that prepared auditions and were awarded seats at the Eastern District Concert Band. Um, I want to point out this is the uh, that was the first year since before uh, the year 2000 that Grifton was represented in all district band. So things are really on the upswing for the band program here at Grifton. Again. That was canceled in 2020, but we're um, we're looking forward to uh, getting more kids participating once we all come out of this. And um, as I mentioned, um, I just like the elephant in the room, the pandemic. Um, due to the pandemic, we have gone um, completely virtual for band and orchestra. And what you're looking at is a photograph of my setup where I teach students through Zoom. And you can see I have my instruments encircling me so I can grab what I need to demonstrate what I need to. Um, I also want to point out that every band and orchestra student gets a uh, paid subscription to uh, an online platform called Smart Music, which uh, makes teaching and giving assignments for band and orchestra possible in a pandemic situation. Um, but the nice thing is once we come out of this pandemic, we're planning on keeping that Smart Music subscription going, so we'll still be able to continue with that instruction enhancement. Okay. And that wraps up. I, I said a lot, but I had to speak for three of us. But yeah, exciting things happening here for band and orchestra here at Griffin. And for art. Mr. Wells is awesome. You did say a lot, but it is all great information. And it's exactly what parents coming to this tour want to know. Um, it was so good to see all of those spaces and opportunities. And I know that parents watching, you are imagining your students uh, being there in um, those spaces and taking advantage of those opportunities. I think we are going to move now to Mr. Hill, um, and he is also going to uh, show us a presentation and talk with us a bit about the career and technical education component of Grifton. Okay, my name is Coach Hill, and I... all right, so is everybody seeing that? Yep. Tell us about Okay, yourself. great. Uh, this is my first time doing it, so uh, I'm new at it. All right, so my name is Coach Hill, CTE College and Career Ready Lab at Griffin School. Um, our program is really new. Uh, it's a year and a half into it. Um, we started last fall, and uh, uh, Beth Ann Trueblood, who's in charge of CT, and uh, Mr. Smith and Ms. Mathis, we found a room that allowed us to accommodate uh, 13 modules that this program entails. And I'm gonna go through, I'm not gonna read everything, but uh, for those that would like to go through a little bit more and tell exactly what each module does, you're welcome to do that. Uh, so we have 13 modules in a, in a regular school year, not dealing with COVID, uh, we have, uh, each station set up uh, with two, two students, sometimes three. Uh, I am limited space, and it has become a very popular um, class to take. So as Mr. Smith and Ms. Matthew were saying earlier, it's limited, but we do try our best to get everybody in. And I do uh, deal with the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, and it's been a uh, real success. Um, I wanted to let uh, everybody know that Grifton School was chosen for this new program called College and Career Ready Labs through Paxton Patterson. And um, not only did our students buy into it, our, our, our parents and our community, 
And of course we had great support with administration and from central office. And now we have two more programs in the county at CMS and Jacquard due to Grifton School and the students doing very well. So I'm very proud of them. Here's a photo of uh, electricity and electronics in the lab. Um, here again, home maintenance fundamentals, introduction to culinary arts. There's some of the students learning how to do basic cooking. They learn, you know, different things from uh, uh, preparation of foods to safeguards to um, bacteria and cleanliness. Uh, we've had to be kind of creative this year because we're, we have not been able to get into our lab. So I have challenged the students that are doing the modules. They, they really can't do it, the activities in school here, but they're doing them at home and sending me videos uh, with help of the parents involvement and the community. So that has been a, a big success, even though we couldn't get in the labs. Uh, introduction to computer science and health science. And there's one of the students, um, uh, weigh in, uh, let, me, let me back up just a little bit. So it's a fifth through eighth grade curriculum, but we do try to involve our K through fourth graders. And they, uh, before again, COVID, they would walk around, get in the stations, and my middle schoolers would teach the younger students, which was great. Also promoting the program, um, which was great. Robotics, structural engineering. Here's two students dealing with alternate energy uh, with solar panels and uh, windmill power. You have video production and personal finance. And um, as we all know, personal finance, whether you go in that field or not, it's great just to have uh, knowing how to balance a checkbook, your simple day-to-day -day paying bills, investment, and careers. My background is business finance management, so I'm real big on the business uh, part of that. And uh, we also uh, do a lot of uh, writing in here too, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, video production, you can see uh, students set up doing a video production series with some uh, child development. Uh, station there. Uh, of course, I already said alternate energy, introduction to child development, and there they are dealing with some babies <laughs> and uh, real life situations. Home maintenance systems, uh, two students working on some systems uh, and electronics and electricity. I also get them to do a Who Am I project. Uh, it helps me to get to know them better, even though we're a small school and everybody knows everybody, so to speak, it's still nice to get to know them. Uh, and my philosophy is if they're not learning the way you teach, teach the way they learn. So that helps me understand uh, where they're coming from, their interests, their backgrounds. And uh, it, it really makes it exciting and challenging as a teacher and as a, uh, as a classroom. We also, do, like I said, uh, writing assignments. I'm big on writing. Uh, we do letters to colleges and businesses. Um, I also allow them to pick a celebrity they write a formal letter to. They also do informal letters to their parents, thanking them you know, for uh, whatever they wanna do. And uh, they get a treat out of that. Uh, we're real involved with the uh, Grow Local program here. And uh, uh, we've been to Sudden Link. There's our signs, you know, thanking them uh, from Grifton School. And they go on a tour. And these field trips, yeah, of course, you get out of school, you get to maybe eat some lunch at Chick-fil-A. It's great to get out every once in a while. But the, the bottom line is the things they're learning and the skills and knowledge in the classroom with 13 modules they see it firsthand in the real world, whether it's Sudden Link and or Grady White Boats. And I've had the privilege of doing Grady White Boats field trips for the past 15 years. And uh, 
that's an annual thing. This year, a little bit different. We're not able to do it, but we'll get back on track. Um, we also get our staff involved and our staff loves to eat. So when it comes to culinary arts, uh, cook all teachers as judges uh, have a lined up ready to go. And last year was a big success. Uh, we had Mr. D, Miss Jane Winfield, uh, Captain Andrews and uh, Mr. Wilson, and we had others to help out. So we we're big on involvement. And of course, Griffin School is a great place to learn and plan your career goals and go Grifton Bulldogs. All right, well, thank you for sharing with us about that program. Um, this is certainly the first tour that uh, I've done so far where this type of program was described. And so it was a real treat for um, families who were who have been watching this, uh, this tour of Grifton. Thank you so much. Um, we will move back now to uh, Ms. Mathis and Mr. Smith. And if they're still on, I think they are. Um, and talk with them about any closing things that you'd like to share with parents there at Grifton. Well, I'd just like to reiterate that, you know, Grifton is, you know, the family town, you know, you know the school plays right into that. You know, everybody, you know, is very close knit here. You know, we build relationships with our students over many years. You know, when you come here in pre-K or kindergarten, you know, you know, you're going to build relationships with with people that will last not just the nine or 10 years you're a student here, but for life. I mean, it's, you know, this community is very proud of our school. We have a long history and, uh, you know, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. All right. I think those are, that's a great way to end our program today with Grifton. Those of you who are watching, uh, of course, if you have questions about Grifton School, I know that Ms. Mathis and Mr. Smith would be more than happy to talk with you. Um, you're also able to contact us at Parents for Public Schools, and we are happy to help make connections to those who could answer your questions. Thank you to everyone who participated in the tour today, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.